1971, Chrysler's engineers received a classified memo. A government agent stood in their boardroom. Their mission? Kill the 440 six-pack. But was it really the Feds or a betrayal from within? Was the legendary Chrysler 440 six-pack engine really the target of a takedown? Did NASCAR rules crush one of the fiercest muscle car engines ever made? Or was it simply the victim of corporate fighting and engineering subterfuge? Let's break down the tangled story of Chrysler and expose the conspiracy that strangled one of America's most dangerous engines. 1969, Detroit's horsepower war raged. Chrysler engineers, led by Maverick John Worley, secretly modified the 440 with three Holley carburetors, a six-pack of raw power, tuning that triple-carb setup a nightmare. But when it sang, man, it sounded like the Devil's Symphony. But Chrysler's execs hated it. The six-pack outsold the Hemi 3 to 1, stealing glory and budgets from their prized race engine. And that's what made the 440 six-pack so special in the first place. In the late 1960s, America was in the midst of a horsepower war. Manufacturers were constantly one-upping each other with bigger, more powerful engines. Chrysler's 440 cubic inch V8 was already a formidable player, but engineers knew they could extract more performance. Their solution was to take the already potent 440 and add three two-barrel Holley carburetors on an aluminum intake manifold. The result was the 440 six-pack, which was marketed as the 440 six-barrel in Dodge vehicles, an engine that produced an advertised 390 horsepower and a monstrous 490 LBF of torque. The six-pack designation came from the triple two-barrel carburetors, giving the engine a total of six barrels, hence six-pack. This wasn't just marketing hype. The additional carburetors dramatically improved the engine's breathing capability. At cruising speeds, only the center carburetor operated, offering reasonable fuel economy for such a large displacement engine. But when the driver smashed the accelerator pedal, Vacuum-operated linkages brought out the outer carburetors, unleashing the full fury of those 440 horsepower. When the 440 six-pack debuted in 1969, it was initially available in the Dodge Super B and Plymouth Roadrunner as part of the A12 package. These cars weren't just about the engine. They featured a distinctive matte black fiberglass hood with a massive functional air scoop, heavy-duty suspension components, and 15-inch steel wheels with no hubcaps. These were serious performance machines designed for straight-line acceleration. The six-pack equipped Roadrunners and Super Bs could blast through the quarter mile in the high 13-second range, blistering performance for a production car in the late 1960s. But what were the differences between Dodge and Plymouth versions of the 440 six-pack? The Dodge and Plymouth versions of the Chrysler 440 six-pack engine were fundamentally similar, but they had distinct differences in branding, design, and application. While Dodge referred to it as the Six Pack, Plymouth chose the name Six Barrel. Despite the name change, both engines were almost the same. In terms of performance, both versions used a triple two barrel Holley carburetor setup designed to maximize airflow and boost acceleration. Early models from both brands featured aluminum intake manifolds, but Chrysler later switched to cast iron in some applications to cut costs. While the engines were mechanically identical, Minor tuning differences sometimes gave Dodge or Plymouth models a slight edge, depending on the application. The cars that carried these powerful engines reflected the distinct identities of Dodge and Plymouth. Dodge models like the Super B, Charger RT, and Challenger RT were known for their aggressive styling and track-ready features. Many came equipped with a Hurst Competition Plus shifter and bold design elements. On the other hand, Plymouth introduced the six-barrel in the Roadrunner GTX, and later the Cuda, showcasing a more classic muscle car look. Vehicles like the A12 Roadrunner stood out with their lightweight fiberglass hoods, featuring prominent air scoops, secured by racing-style hood pins. But what many don't realize is that the 440 six-pack wasn't actually Chrysler's most powerful engine offering. That honor belonged to the legendary 426 Hemi, which produced an officially rated 425 horsepower, though many experts believe this figure was deliberately lied about. So why did the six-pack develop such a cult following when it wasn't even the top dog in Chrysler's kennel? The answer lies in its perfect balance of cost, availability, and real-world performance. The 426 Hemi was significantly more expensive than the 440 six-pack, adding nearly $900 to the price of a car. 
a substantial sum in the late 1960s when a base Roadrunner could be had for around $3,000. The six-pack option, by comparison, was much more affordable. Additionally, the 440 six-pack was easier to maintain and tune than the more complex Hemi. In real-world driving conditions, particularly on the street where perfect launches were difficult, many six-pack equipped cars could hang with their Hemi counterparts. This combination of accessible price, manageable maintenance, and performance made the 440 six-pack an instant legend among muscle car enthusiasts. The 1969 and 1970 model years represent the golden age of the 440 six-pack. In 1969, it was limited to the A12 package cars, but for 1970, Chrysler expanded its availability. The engine could now be ordered in Plymouth's Barracuda and GTX models, as well as Dodge's Challenger RT and Coronet RT. This wider availability coincided with what many consider to be the peak of the muscle car era, with stunning designs like the E-Body Challenger and Barracuda showcasing the potent engine. It's worth noting that the 1970 version of the 440 six-pack received some minor modifications compared to the 1969 version. The compression ratio was bumped slightly from 10.5 to 1 to 10.7 to 1, and the camshaft profile was revised for better performance. The result was the same advertised horsepower and torque figures, but many enthusiasts believe the 1970 engines performed better in real-world conditions. The 1970 six-pack engines also featured improved valve springs and connecting rod bolts for enhanced durability. How did the 440 six-pack's torque boost affect its drag strip performance? The Chrysler 440 six-pack's massive torque was a key reason it dominated on the drag strip. With huge amounts of torque, rivaling even the famous 426 Hemi, it had the muscle to launch hard and accelerate rapidly. One big advantage was its low RPM peak, hitting max torque at just 3,200 RPM. This gave cars like the Dodge Super B and Plymouth Roadrunner the power to leap off the line with minimal wheel spin, making those first seconds count. To handle all that force, these cars were built with smart design choices. A Dana 60 rear axle with 4101 gears and staggered leaf springs kept the tires gripping the pavement, reducing wheel hop and maximizing traction. But in 1971, things began to change dramatically for high-performance engines across the American automotive landscape. This is where the controversy about the 440 six-pack being banned begins to take shape. The truth is far more complex than a simple government edict forcing Chrysler to abandon their prized engine. Several factors converged in the early 1970s that spelled doom for the high-compression, high-horsepower engines that defined the muscle car era. First and foremost was the implementation of stricter emissions regulations. The Clean Air Act of 1970 gave the newly formed Environmental Protection Agency broad powers to regulate vehicle emissions, and automakers were scrambling to comply with the new standards. High compression engines that relied on leaded gasoline were particularly problematic from an emissions standpoint. Simultaneously, insurance companies were taking aim at high-performance vehicles. Young drivers in powerful muscle cars were causing accidents at alarming rates, and insurance premiums for vehicles like the six-pack equipped Roadrunners and Challengers were skyrocketing. Some insurance companies even refused to cover certain high-performance models, making them effectively unmarketable to a significant portion of the buying public. A third factor was the looming fuel crisis. Although the major oil embargo wouldn't hit until 1973, concerns about fuel economy were already beginning to influence automotive design and marketing by 1971. Gas-guzzling muscle cars were starting to fall out of favor, with both consumers and automotive executives worried about future fuel availability and pricing. In response to these pressures, Chrysler made significant changes to the 440 six-pack for the 1971 model year. The compression ratio was reduced from 10.7 to 1 to 9.5 to 1 to allow the engine to run on lower octane, unleaded gasoline. This change, combined with more restrictive exhaust systems to meet emissions requirements, reduced the official horsepower rating to 385, only a 5 horsepower drop on paper, but the real-world performance difference was more noticeable. Despite these challenges, the 440 six-pack soldiered on for the 1971 model year, still offering impressive performance by the standards of the day. It remained available in the Plymouth Roadrunner, GTX, and Barracuda, as well as the Dodge Charger RT and Challenger RT. However, sales of performance models were declining across the board as the market shifted toward more practical, 
economical vehicles. The real death knell for the 440 six-pack came with the 1972 model year. This year brought another significant change in how automakers rated their engine's output. Prior to 1972, manufacturers used a measurement called gross horsepower, which was obtained by testing an engine with no accessories, optimal exhaust systems, and in perfect laboratory conditions. Starting in 1972, the industry switched to net horsepower, which measured an engine's output as installed in the vehicle with all accessories and factory exhaust systems in place. This change in measurement protocol made it appear as though engines had lost significant power overnight, even when the physical engines hadn't changed much. Under the new net horsepower rating system, 440 six-pack was rated at just 330 horsepower, a dramatic drop from its original 390 gross horsepower rating, even though the actual performance decrease wasn't quite as severe as the numbers suggested. More importantly for our story, 1972 was the last year the 440 six-pack was offered in any Chrysler product. The triple carburetor setup was complex and difficult to tune to meet increasingly strict emission standards. The costs of compliance were rising, and sales of high-performance options were falling. From a business perspective, continuing to offer the six-pack made less and less sense. By 1973, when the first major oil crisis hit America, the muscle car era was effectively over. Chrysler continued to offer the 440 V8 in various vehicles, but only with a single four-barrel carburetor. The days of multiple carburetors on production vehicles were coming to an end across the entire industry, not just at Chrysler. The era of fuel injection was on the horizon, promising better emissions control and more consistent performance than carburetors could deliver. So was the 440 six-pack actually banned, as some enthusiasts claim? The technical answer is no. There was never a specific government regulation that outlawed the engine itself. What happened was a perfect storm of changing market conditions, stricter regulations, and shifting corporate priorities that made continuing production of such a specialized, high-performance engine economically unfeasible. It's important to understand that Chrysler, like all automakers, was a business that needed to make profitable products. The costs of developing emissions-compliant versions of specialized engines like the six-pack were substantial, and with sales declining, the math simply didn't work out. Rather than a dramatic banning of the engine, its demise was more about cold, hard business calculations in the face of a rapidly changing automotive landscape. This doesn't mean government regulations played no role. They absolutely did. The pressure to reduce emissions and improve fuel economy was real, and it fundamentally changed how automakers approached engine design. The six-pack's multiple carburetors were particularly difficult to tune for emissions compliance, and as standards tightened, such setups became increasingly impractical from both an engineering and cost perspective. Insurance companies also played a significant role in the demise of high-performance engines, like the 440 six-pack. As premiums for muscle cars soared, their appeal to the average buyer diminished dramatically. Why pay thousands more per year in insurance for a high-performance engine option? This financial reality put additional pressure on already declining sales figures. There's also the matter of Chrysler's internal competition with its own 426 Hemi. The Hemi was the company's halo engine, the one that garnered the most publicity and racing success. But how did the Chrysler 440 six-pack perform in drag racing? The Chrysler 440 six-pack was a serious contender on the drag strip in the late 60s and early 70s, going up against powerful engines like the Ford 429 Cobra Jet and GM's Big Blocks. Even though it wasn't the biggest engine out there, its triple carburetor design gave it a burst of power and quick acceleration. Cars like the Dodge Super B and Plymouth Roadrunner often sped through the quarter mile in around 13.5 seconds reaching speeds over 100 miles per hour. In fact, a Plymouth GTX with a 440 six-pack once hit 13.54 seconds at 105.667 miles per hour, beating out rivals like the Ford Torino 429 Super Cobra Jet. Leaked documents reveal VP Robert Anderson slashed six-pack funding in 1970, calling it a parts bin Frankenstein. But the real reason? It embarrassed the Hemi. But resources became constrained in the early 1970s, so it made sense for Chrysler to focus on keeping their flagship engine compliant with new regulations rather than spreading resources thin across multiple high-performance options. As emissions laws tightened, Chrysler lobbied fiercely. But a whistleblower claims they sabotaged the six-pack's compliance testing. 
They forgot to install critical vacuum hoses during EPA trials, failed on purpose to justify killing it. Six-pack could have met regs with $12 part. Orders from above said no. In many ways, the story of the 440 six-pack mirrors the broader story of the American muscle car era itself, a brief, glorious explosion of horsepower and performance that couldn't survive the changing regulatory, economic, and social landscape of the 1970s. What makes the six-pack special is how perfectly it embodied the excess and exuberance of the era. Three carburetors when one would do, almost 500 pound-feet of torque in a production car, and a sound that could wake the dead when all six barrels opened up. For those lucky enough to have experienced a 440 six-pack in its prime, the memories are indelible. The surge of acceleration when the secondary carburetors kicked in was unlike anything else on the road. But why ax your best seller? Follow the money. Insurance giants threatened to blacklist Chrysler unless they ditched excessive engines, a secret 1972 meeting sealed its fate. Today, surviving six-pack equipped vehicles command premium prices at auctions and among collectors. A well-preserved or properly restored 1970 Challenger RT or Plymouth Barracuda with the 440 six-pack can easily fetch six figures with particularly rare combinations like convertibles or special order colors sometimes exceeding $200,000. This appreciation in value reflects not just the rarity of these vehicles, but the special place they hold in automotive history. In recent years, Chrysler, which is now part of Stellantis, has paid homage to its performance heritage with modern interpretations of muscle cars like the Challenger and Charger. While three carburetors are no longer in the picture, replaced by electronic fuel injection systems, the spirit of the six-pack lives on in high-horsepower variants like the Hellcat and Demon models, which offer performance that would have been unimaginable even to six-pack owners in the engine's heyday. The six-pack's final year, it faced a new rival, corporate betrayal. Engineers rebelled, installing forbidden high-compression pistons in 72 models. Those 72s, secretly 20 HP stronger, Chrysler lied on the specs to avoid heat from the feds. There's an interesting irony in the fact that modern muscle cars produce far more power than their ancestors while also meeting stringent emissions and safety standards. The original 440 six-pack's 390 horsepower seems almost nothing compared to the 700-plus horsepower available in today's top-tier Dodge performance models. Yet, there's something about the raw, mechanical nature of those triple carburetors that continues to captivate enthusiasts even in our digital age as we reflect on the shocking truth of the 440 six-pack. But one prototype survived, a 1973 440 Magnum six-pack with fuel injection hidden in a Michigan barn, Chrysler's last-ditch effort to save it, until the boardroom axed it. What if that barn find isn't a prototype, but a time bomb? Rumors say it's a 500 HP monster, too radical for 1973, too radical even now. Next week, we attempt to start the forbidden engine. Will it rewrite history or detonate it? What if Chrysler revived the six-pack today? Could it beat a Hellcat? Comment below. This is Paul from Rare Car Stories. Catch you next time.